Well, welcome, welcome to another RV repair brought to you by Brazzles RV. I say that because I wouldn't for Brazzles, I couldn't fix this because they provide me with some cool parts that I need when I need them. Uh, anyways, what I'm about to do or attempt to do is replace this flimsy little lens that uh, comes this, with this Actia uh, digital dash and you know on, on your workhorse chassis. They may be used on other vehicles too, but I know this one came out, out of my workhorse, but I th think some bread trucks and stuff like that use the same dash. Uh, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I'll tell you how I got here. I went to start the RV up the other day. I turned on the key, and my readout, my LCD display, looked like this, kind of washed out. I thought, oh no, my LCD screen has went bad. So I quickly, quickly snapped a picture of it, emailed it to Brazzles, and I said, what's the deal? They said, nope, my screen is fine. The problem is a bad resistor. So, uh, so I took the dash out and boxed it up and sent it. And while I was taking it out to ship it off to get the resistor replaced, also while I was testing it, they updated the software, which if you ever notice driving your RV and as you're driving along, all of a sudden all the gauges, all the needles freak out and sweep and come back and forth. Well, there's a little glitch in that, but evidently with this software software upgrade, uh, that takes care of that problem. It's, it doesn't happen anymore. So they did that. They put in a new resistor, put a new speaker in for me. So now my, my display, or, that's all took care of. And also I was talking to them about the fact that these tabs break off. I say, hey, since can we get another lens? I says, well, he said, well, no, actually they're no longer manufactured by Actia or Workhorse. And you see what happens here. The tabs break off. It's so flimsy. So, uh, but Brazzles have come to our rescue once again because they have something that'll work in its place. And here is our new lens. Of course, my take that paper off it'll be much clearer but it's really thick look how thick that is compared to the original one so it's gonna be a really good solid lens another problem i guess they was having somewhat with some of these lenses they would they would flex and sometimes come in contact with the, the needles and it would cause these um the oh i forget what they're called anyway the little motors to to burn out uh, early early failure so anyway so we're going to get this changed out Okay, well, let me start some, some scratch here because I'm assuming if you're taking your if you've already taken yours out and about to change it, uh, the cluster the lens is already in. I'll just show you how easy it is to pop it out. You got these little clips here. Push that in. Push that in. Do it. Go all the way, all the way around, and it pops right out. Now, one tip: watch these little white pieces of plastic because they fall right out and roll off into the floor just like that did. So anyway, keep that in mind. Don't lose these little pieces. You'll need those for sure. Okay, and with this kit, it got it comes with everything you need. All we get new scoot them up right here. We got got new stainless steel screws. They're longer than the ones that come out with it. Uh, so I'm gonna get that started. We got got to do a little drilling, so that shouldn't be a problem. So let's uh, get things lined up and installed. Put a few screws in here, drill a few holes, and we'll see how this progresses. Okay, you see I've put these screws in here, and I'm going to snug them down so the lens is in the proper position so I can drill me some holes. We've got to drill a few holes for the uh, smaller screws that's going to be attaching it to the cluster. Okay, you see I've got my screws all the way put in everything's nice and snug now you can see these little, little bitty holes here so I got a drill in the center of each one of those all the way around so let me get that done and put these screws in there and then we can start peeling this off and see what it looks like Not so bad, and I didn't drill a hole through the wife's countertop. Come on, battery, stay with me. One, one hole to go. Battery's getting low. Oh, there we got it. Just barely made it. All right, so let's put some, get some screws started. Okay, I have just a minor snag, not much, but 
I'm uh, trying to be a good boy and follow the directions. The direction says drill a 1 16th hole. So, man, that's a small drill bit. So, I did that. Drilled 1 16th holes all the way around. But then I realized I was really having to apply a lot of pressure to get that screw started. More than I wanted to apply. So, I did a, got me a scrap piece of plastic. So, I drilled me a 1 16th. Then also drilled me a 5 64th, the next size up. And that worked much easier for me. The the screw went in there. It's It's good and snug. But uh, 1 16th, I believe, is just too small. Um, maybe there was a screw change or something. But anyway, that was my experience. There's 1 16th, 5 64th. So for me, I'm doing 5 64th on these little tapered holes all the way around here. And I'll put my screws in. And we'll be in good shape. And my battery died. I had to pull out a bigger drill. You don't need to watch all this. Okay, now here's a, here's a tip because it tells you to use a number one Phillips bit, but you want to get a good one. So you, you never know. You, you grab one, you think it's good, but you put it on there and it all wiggles around. What? But it's it's this is really on there, good and snug. If it'll hold the screw on there and not fall off. You know you got a you got a good bit. And that's going in there, good and snug. I think 564 is the way to go and of course I warned you not to over tight you just just enough to get the lens to contact the cluster here we go not too much okay so for good measure I ran the screws all the way down kind of did a dry run everything looks good so I'll pull the screws back out and carefully take this protective cover off Put it back together without getting my fingerprints on anything, especially on the back side, because you'll never get that cleaned off if you do. Okay, all the screws are out. And we'll peel this off here. Do my best not to get my little fingerprints all over it. And we do something. We do this. Put these in first. Get down here. All right there. Just like Christmas. Very nice. All right, I gotta get my little rubber doodad in there. Where'd it go? Hang on, I've lost it somewhere. Okay, I've discovered something. This might be a little tricky. You can see all the fingerprints I've got all this thing all over it already. Because this is my old lens. But in getting this little rubber piece out, it pops out pretty easy. Blah, blah. But trying to put it back in. Let's see what a big lip that thing has on it. So you just about have to get it started. Yeah, I don't know. It might give me tr trouble. i got to do this in a way. In hindsight, I should have put this in before I peeled off the protective covering. That would have been a smart thing to do. But that is water under the bridge. So let's, uh, let me think this out here a second. Okay, I'm trying to be as careful as I can. I think it's going to work. All right, so maybe. Pull it through. Here we go. Did them pull through. It is a little tricky. Okay. 
right, I think we got it with that little fingerprints on there. At least fingerprints on the back side. I can always wipe off the front, but once you get that together, you're not going to get the front side of the back side clean. Okay, let's put her together. Oh, let me test, make sure these buttons, yep, they're doing what they're supposed to do. Get you lined up there. Okay, now it seems like we're going to have to push down a little bit more than what we used to. It clicks, but you're going to have to use your fingernail to get a good click on it. So let's check. Get some screws in there and we'll put this back together shortly. Okay, well, if you know me, I can't seem to leave any, anything alone. But so. I was playing with this, you know, it, it does work. I can push it, I can feel the button, but I know the way I am when I'm driving down the road, I'm always pushing buttons. And that's going to be a little more difficult than I want it to be. I mean, it works just fine, but I thought, well, is there anything I could do to make it easier? So I took it back off and was looking at it. I, th I thought, well, what can I do? I either have to make those little rods longer or find something to fill up the space. So I got to looking around and I came across a couple of BBs right there. So watch this. A BB in that one. Try not to put no fingerprints in it. Go like this. All right. Get another BB. All right, let me kind of shove it down in there a little bit. All right, now flip it over. Get lined up. Okay, now, can you hear it click? I just barely have to touch it. Now, because I do have a concern of cold weather, if that, if that rubber tries to draw up or get stiff, if it's gonna be pushing on that button all the time. I don't think it will. If it does, I can actually because of the way this rubber is, I could I could pull this out even after it's installed. Probably do that, but I think that's going to work for me. I know how I am about pushing buttons or going down the road, so I like that little modification. All right, so now I got to do is uh, put the screws in here, and, and now again, this is where you want to be careful getting a really good uh, a bit driver because one slip you'd be scratching across your new lens. Just ruin your day, ruin it. Now I gotta find my driver later to somewhere. All right, so I got, I got all these little screws started. I'll run them all the way down and I'll show you what it looks like. And remember, you just wanna snug it up. Just till it meets the plastic. It's all you gotta do. Don't be getting crazy with no torque and crack nothing. Now, don't that look better? Beautiful. Nice. Flat. Strong. Um, this might be a tip because I, I know these Actia dashboards are going all kinds of other vehicles, bread trucks, delivery trucks, and you might have something in a dusty, dirty uh, situation where they pick up a lot of dust, it might be wise to you know take you some clear silicone caulk or something other and fill up these holes in the back because that's normally where those tabs would be, and that may help prevent getting any dust in on the back side. Um, just a tip. RV is probably not so much uh, of a problem, but if this is going in some sort of delivery truck and you're running up and down uh, dusty, dirty roads, that might come in handy. So now I just got to get her back into the dashboard. Okay, I'm about to button this up, but I realized I remember I got another video showing me taking this all apart and putting it back together. And because I'm filming one-handed tonight, uh, I'm just going to edit that video on the end of this one. So you get an idea of how it all comes back together. The trickiest part is getting these little screws started up in here because you don't, don't have much room. It's kind of tight. And of course, there's a couple different designs on these. Uh, this one's more of a pain 
a little bit compared to other ones you can get them from the back side there's a piece will come out and get to them much easier mine takes a little bit more finesse but i'll put that video on into this and then i'll um i'll come back and show you the finished product well i got a new little project to do today and if you're a workhorse owner this dashboard will look familiar to you i think it's been around for quite a while this particular one I'm working on a, uh, this is a Winnebago 38J 2005 model on a W24 chassis. But the uh, project is changing out the LCD screen. They're bad for going out and before mine does, I'm going to go ahead and replace it. So I'm going to get into that and see what it's like to get it out. And I'll uh, kind of document it as I go. So that way you can do it also. Here we go. Okay, well, step one, of course, if your dash light is like anything like mine, you've got all kinds of accessories on it, so I've, I've taken those things off, so as I tilt the dash back, things aren't going to be coming loose and flying around. I've got my scan gauge, too. Uh, it's got uh, double-sided tape on it, so it's, it's not going anywhere. And you can see it's on a hinge. It hinges right up, just like that. And i got my little pole in there that I use to hold this up. I need a second hand to do that, so let me get that done. Right. Got, my, got my, it's just a little half inch piece of PVC, and I slobbed it right there so it holds it in position. I have good access to everything. So now it's a matter of looking around and seeing what I got to do uh, in order to get the, uh, the dashboard apart. So let me do a little research and poke around and see what I can find. Okay, let me point out to you what our goal is. So our goal is we've got to get to these Phillip head screws. And as you can see, we cannot get to them from here. Because uh, this plastic piece has to come loose. You can see how it kind of sandwiches together right here. And there's a few nuts that looks like it holds this together. I just took one nut loose. You can see it right there. That is a 9 millimeter nut. Uh, so I've got that one loose, so now I'm going to slowly take something else loose until I get it out. Alright, I found a few more screws to take loose. I took this loose because this face plate screws right into the metal frame that all this other stuff is attached to. So you can see the gap I got there, and I'm getting a bigger gap here. So we can see those Phillips screws, but I still need a little more space to get up to these. So, in poking around, I discovered some more uh, 9mm nuts right up here. There's one, and I'll show you from this front side. It's actually one right here and one right there. So, I've taken that one off, and I'm about to take this other one loose. So, I'll say, see what happens and see if that gives me enough. I think I've got it, got it loose enough now. The, the only other nut I had to take loose was the one that's on the back of this plate here. So we had like, that was a 9 millimeter 9, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and then these four screws here. I think that's enough to get me to my space, but now I'm fixing to go unhook the battery, and I should have already done that because because I've got the key up. I'm hoping I haven't caused no trouble, but you can see here, like my jack down lights, the back of that connector, it's come in contact with this metal frame. Now the raised, the uh, the dash up so I'm gonna go unhook the battery real quick so as you can see I've uh, I've moved my battery over here into the basement area so then I keep me a handy little ratchet wrench for stuff like this so I'm gonna hook it kind of quickly all right so now the engine starting battery is disconnected and hopefully I haven't popped any fuses so that would probably be step one you go to do this is unhook uh, the, the engine battery so there's no possibility any shorts. Something else I want to point point out is when you raise this up, check your wiring harness. Make sure you're not pulling anything really tight. I've ran into that before. I had to go in here and redo some of these harnesses because when you raise this up, it's really tugging on them really, really tight. And you don't want to unplug anything. So just go slow. Be careful. And now I just got to get these uh, Phillips screws out of there and. We'll be well okay. on our way. So here's a little tip. 
you know, because sometimes you, you know, you, you see the Phillip screw there, but you really can't get your screwdriver to it to get it loose. But just take your little ratchet wrench and put your bit on it, and it'll break it loose real easy. You can see the just a standard little Phillip bit that we all have, and then I drop it. But you can see you get you get the idea how that works. It makes it real easy to to get those Phillips screws out where normally you couldn't get a Phillips screwdriver at the right angle. So I'm gonna pull out these screws and uh, see what we get. Okay, you can see here I've got all the screws out. If you get all the screws out, it just drops right down. Easy peasy. Now we got that out. Now we just gotta carefully unplug these connectors. It's got a little push button right here. I'm trying to do this one-handed. It's a little bit difficult. And it's gonna take two hands. Okay. So you can see there's little, little tabs right there. You just push it and then locks it. Push that tab and unlocks it. And so there we have it. You know. So this process of time maybe took me 30 minutes. And that's with me not knowing what I'm doing. So now that I've got this out, I'll take it into the house. Put it on my desk. Finish taking this cover off. So here we go with the final product. Looks good, lights up. No smudges, no fingerprints, no scratches. Turned out really well. Got my little push button thing where I added the BBs. Now they're really, it's really sensitive. I like how that works. I'm going through the menu real quick. So I think it'll come in handy when I'm going down, down the road monkeying, monkeying with buttons. So anyhow, that's how I did mine. And I'll put a link down below in the notes to, to Brazel's website. So uh, if you want to put one in yours, you can do so too. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.